So today I'm going to be basically showing you how the leash works. Uh, I'll be showing you on an H75 or an H92 uh, keyway. It's uh, the standard Ford profile before the high security stuff. Uh, there's a different leashy for all sorts of different types of keyways. I got a Toy 43 and HU66 uh, KW1. That's actually just quick set defiant house locks and stuff. This is a CY24. That's going to be the the Y160, Y164, stuff like that for uh, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, uh, some stuff like that. This is probably the B111. Yep, that's going to be a lot of uh, GM products, a lot of Chevys and stuff. Um, but uh, the difference in the leashes um, is simply basically the end here and the graph that's on it. Uh, but the operation works basically the exact same way, uh, depending on uh, what car you're using, that will determine what leash you want to use. So I'm just going to, I have a couple Ford locks here. I, I, they're Ford, Mercury, whatever they came out of. I think this is a Ford uh, Focus Ignition lock. And then uh, I think this one came out of like a Expedition or something, a door lock. Uh, but they all have the same key profile, so that's just what I'm going to be using because I have it readily available. So the point of a leashy is it is a pick and a decoder. If you want to just manipulate the lock and open it, you can use something like these jigglers here. You can use actual automotive picks. Um, if you want to get into the vehicle, there are other ways to bypass the locking system entirely but the point of the leashy is to decode the lock without actually taking it out and apart so you can actually make a key these are for locksmiths who are in that business and if uh, one of my customers lost their keys i could quickly and easily make them another one so what i'm going to do today is i'm just going to basically use this leashy to decode this lock and uh, we're going to take one of these blank keys into the key cutter. And based on the information we get here, we're going to cut a key from that. So with Fords, Ford, uh, there's two ways to do it. You can use the leashy on the door or you can use it on the ignition. If you use it on the door, the, the four doors uh, for these keyways, uh, they're an eight cut key, which means they have eight wafers in them. But for the doors, they have one through six wafers. If you decode that, you're going to get one through six, and then uh, cut seven and eight are going to be just blank nothing, and you'll have to impression them in the uh, ignition cylinder and uh, cut it down a step or two at a time. If you were to use the leashy in the ignition cylinder, you would have to pick all eight wafers and you could get all eight uh, numbers out of that and cut it a little bit easier. Um, so there, it's really two ways to go about it. Sometimes the ignitions are kind of hard to pick sometimes and the doors are pretty easy, uh, but then you have to learn how to impression the other two. Other times, if you can pick the ignition, then cool, you have the bidding as it's called, the depths of the cut. And you can simply just, you know, use that, cut a key, program it, and you're done. So programming will be in a different video. Um, since I'm just making a key for demonstration, this is a bare metal, non-chipped key. Unlike this one, this is going to be an H92 PT, I do believe. This is going to have a transponder chip in it if you cut open the plastic you would find a chip molded in here that the vehicle could actually recognize to shut off the security system uh, and start the vehicle. I'm just going to cut one of these um, after I decode the lock just so you guys can kind of see the process of how it works. Like I said, all of, no matter which one you're using, um, they all pretty much work the exact same way. So it's it's the same process. The only difference is which leash you use, and that's only determined on the profile of the key uh, which type of vehicle you're working on so the very first thing you would need to do is take your lube uh, here's just an example can of WD-40 um, I like to use a lube called Houdini 
I'm not sponsored by it, and I'm not endorsing it. You use whatever lube you want. Um, the Houdini lube that I use, it's a lube and a cleaner all in one, and it seems to work pretty well. So, after you lube up the lock, and you put your little straw in there and spray it up, um, you would want to actually take a blank key and just run it in there. Make sure you can get all those wafers moving. Move it back and forth. Just kind of free up everything until you feel that everything in there is moving nicely and freely. So here's a better shot of those wafers actually going up and down as we put a key in it. You can see how they're being manipulated. On Ford locks, uh, the other thing that I'll mention is the wafers are one up, one down, one up, one down, one up, one down. They're every other. That's the pattern to them. So it makes it easier to pick it if you can understand uh, what the pattern is in the lock that you're working with. Uh, the next thing we do is we're going to stick the leashy in there. Uh, we're going to pull these rods back all the way so they're not in the way of anything. And we're going to stick it in there all the way until it's not going to go in any farther. This is going to be our tensioning rod. These are going to be our manipulation tools that we will use to actually manipulate the lock. So if you look, when I move one of these, we have basically a pick on the end that will interact with the wafer and it will move it up or down depending on which one you're using. The graph on this side of it tells you that we have one through eight wafers. And then this graph on here, the one through five, that's the cut depths. And I'll get to that once we actually pick the lock. So let's go ahead and pick it. All right. As I mentioned earlier, this is going to be a door lock. So the number seven and number eight wafers are non-existent in this lock. So we don't even have to pay attention to those. We're just going to focus on one through six. And again, I'm doing this um, behind a tripod and behind a camera. So it might be a little more difficult than... Oh, there we go. So I picked it. All right, so decoding this is actually rather simple. Um, so if you're picking one of these locks and uh, the wafers are in the numbered slots, then you want to decode the numbered slots. If you're picking it and the wafers are in the blank slots, that's okay too. That just means that this leashy is 180 degrees in the lock and that's the ones that it's lining up with. Either way, it's okay. Just whatever whatever wafers that you actually picked open, uh, that's the ones that you want to decode. So number one, this little needle goes all the way up to number one. So the first cut's going to be a one. The second cut is going to be a four. The third cut is going to be a... I'm going to put that at a two. Fourth cut is going to be a... Three, fifth cut is going to be a, let's say a four, is it a, f yeah, that's, no, nope, that's a five, four, five, yeah, fifth cut is going to be a five, and the sixth cut is going to be a three, so this is a door lock, so we're only going to have the, the first six. Number seven and number eight are not going to have anything in them, so they're just going to go to one. So what we would do is we would just simply write these numbers down, like I've already done here. So, And then I like to draw a little picture with the orientation of the key so I know which way the numbers correlate uh, to, to the leashy and the key and which way I have to cut it. So number five... Let's see again, that seems to be a uh, 
number five seems to be a number f uh, five cut. Wafer five is a number five cut. I think I wrote four there. So I'm just going to change that to a number five. All right. So now that we have our depths figured out, and then since it's an eight cut, we're just going to put an X and an X because we don't know what these two are yet, but this is going to be seven and eight, and we can impression those later if we want to. If we actually pick the ignition, then we would have seven and eight. Um, so we're just going to cut a key based on one, four, three, three, five, three, and uh, see how it goes. So this is a key cutter. Uh, it gives you all sorts of different options. If I have a key code, um, there are many ways to obtain those. I can go to the key database and enter the key code. I can duplicate a key. Options for that, I can cut by bidding, which is what we're doing. I can find the bidding. Um, but we're going we're gonna to cut by bidding. Um, so that, it'll give me the options for different keys. So it's going to be an H75 key that I want. So I'm going to select the H75. Oops. And if you're not sure, a lot of keys will actually have the number printed on them. So right there it says H75. It also says 1196 FD. Uh, that's the same thing. That's just kind of, you know, two different ways to label it uh, for different markets, basically. Um, this is the H92, the H75, the H. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different ones that are the same profile, but they have different transponder chips and uh, go to different vehicles. So that's why they're called different things. But for anything like this, for any of these Fords, H75 will be just fine. So this is the actual key for the lock that we just decoded. This is the code that we got, 143353. I'm reading it backwards because if you notice the direction of the key on my picture, that way is the tip, but the input uh, settings that it have, this way is the tip. So we just got to input it backwards. So if we actually put the actual key in here, just for argument's sake, let's pretend we have it and we're not making a new one from scratch. So we'll just tighten that down. There's also a little Allen screw here to tighten it down this way when you cut it. But uh, if we're duplicating a key, let's say I have one and the customer wants another one, what we can do is we can actually find the bidding. So we'll decode it. And this little probe will basically sense where everything is at. And since it knows what kind of key it is and knows it's symmetrical, it will only actually sense one side of it because it knows the other side's going to be the exact same. So right now it's just going down and testing the depth of each cut so it knows the bidding. So our code that we decoded was 143353, and the actual key is 143353. So we know that we're correct. The other two numbers, we'd simply have to impression, which I can make another video about later. But that's all there is to it. If we were to cut one, we would simply just put a blank key in the key cutter. I would, I would tighten down this part so it's not wiggling up and down. And then I would also tighten down that so it's not wiggling side to side. And then this one will actually tell you which line it wants you to put it up to because it you already told it which key it is and then I would simply hit cut key so basically this thing's going to sense both sides of it and the tip so it can make its measurements and then this thing would just go down and actually cut a key
So for these keys, it makes three passes on each side to cut them. It can't do one pass on each side because that would be incredibly too deep and it would damage it. So then we loosen that up. Basically, you know, clean off all the crap from it. And as you can see, if we look at these two keys, the first two cuts don't matter because this is going for the door. Since these Ford door keys don't actually have number seven or eight wafers in them, those two don't matter at all. I could even cut the tips of these keys off and, you know, put them in there and they'd still work. So we can see that the lock can still turn. I'm actually holding the back of this lock that actually connects to the core. So I can turn the outside of this. If I take the key out, it won't. And then this other key, which is also slightly different, still works. All the wafers line up and everything works. So yeah, that's, that's how a leashy works. That's how to decode a lock. So you can make one for your customer. Um, obviously, if you were gonna actually program it to the vehicle, you wouldn't wanna use one of these. I like to start with these service keys because they're a dime a dozen. And if I mess up or if I need to adjust something, I know I can get the key right before I actually cut one of the chipped ones because the chipped ones are more expensive and I don't want to make a mistake with those. So that's that.